So what I'd like to do today is give a couple of other examples of place-based approaches, but pr primarily to focus on 20-minute neighbourhoods. The other examples are there because they're part of the solution. There isn't anyone saying, go out, let's look at that ambition of 20-minute neighbourhoods in isolation. They'll be far more successful if we think of combining them up with other place-based approaches that exist. Um, so very quickly, community wealth building. There's an elected member briefing note on the Improvement Service website if you'd like to read more about it. It is very much about looking at those anchor organisations in an area. Primarily, when we think about that, that's councils, that's the NHS, that's any organisation that's a significant employer and has a significant amount of land and property and procurement within an area. And it's about asking those organisations to think first, to not always go for what may seem the cheaper option, but to at times go for what would be the, the option that deals with the other priorities that they've got and could in the long term save them more money than going for the shorter term immediate answer that, that would be saving money. A, a very good example when it comes to planning is, is the moving of West Dumbartonshire's council offices from an out of town centre location right smack bank into the, the town centre of Dumbarton. They could have more cheaply gone elsewhere, gone to Clyde Bank, gone to a purpose-built office, but instead they were aware of problems with their town centre, they were aware that it wasn't thriving, and so they moved their council offices, they moved their people into the town centre, they took over a derelict site that had been sitting there for 30 years, and in doing that they didn't just use their assets, they also used their people, moving them in, that are now going through the town centre, helping it to thrive, and they used their procurement by making a decision not to have a cafe in, in the, the office um, so that people would go out into the centre and create footfall. Another area um, where place-based approaches are fundamental is the Regeneration Capital Grant Fund, which specifically asks that projects involve people, local communities, um, and that we look to help those in the most immediate disadvantage. An important aspect of every place-based approach is that it is there to deal with those inequalities because it's those unintended consequences that impact on uh, our increasing inequalities. And that's where we have to be clear that we're not having that impact. For the Regeneration Capital Fund, an example being Falkirk Town Centre, the themes are clear again. It's about people, the local community, it's about the physical, redeveloping a town centre square, and it's about the economy and the impact that it, it can have and how it can promote an economy. So leave that one with you. It is always about physical environment, the people and the economy as well. So to 20 Minute Neighbourhoods, um, the programme for government has just come out and has been very clear in its support for 20 minute neighbourhoods moving forward to enable um, healthier living and also to help us to, to meet our net zero ambitions. It's, it's, it spells out what it feels that, that it includes around active travel and exercise and access to, to local services as well. So in Scotland, that leaves us in a position of um, much debating what we mean by a 20 minute neighbourhood. Um, with Melbourne, and we look worldwide, we look to Melbourne and Portland, who, who refer to 20 minute neighbourhoods, we look to Paris and their 15 minute city, Copenhagen, five minute radius, and then Barcelona, who do away with any reference to time and, and refer to super blocks. Um, it's really important we don't get hung up with the distance because the most important aspect is, is that image on the right hand side. Um, a 20 minute neighbourhood and how far you can go in 20 minutes we all know will be different depending on which of those people you are in that image. And so we have to think about um, what is accessible across all different population groups. So really for myself when we come down to it, it's about access to daily services and amenities without requiring a car and that access to daily services and amenities needs to be considered in the light of all of those different population groups um, that exist. We have a third of our population without cars but we have other large percentages of people who are wheeling, who are um, our ageing population and we need to be considering those as well when we are thinking about 20 minute neighbourhoods. It isn't so much the time scale, it's about creating a lifestyle where people do not need to get into a car despite whether they own one or not. 
So we have Scotland's fourth national planning framework and um, the position statement is out and it builds on what was in the programme for government with support for 20 minute neighbourhoods. And it's really clear here where it says that this isn't just for cities, this is for cities, towns and rural areas and that they will explore those contexts for Scotland. And that's where we are now. We're looking at, we see what others are doing across the world. What are we going to do in Scotland then? And that this is an important aspect. And I think at times is seen as a barrier when people feel it's just a city issue. It most definitely isn't. You can have a rural town and it can be building as a 20 minute neighbourhood so that it is better placed to serve its hinterland and its rural community so that people do, yes, need to get in a car to get there. But when they get there, they will get more services and amenities that prevent them needing to continue on in that car to, to access more of what they need. So applying that concept of 20 minute neighbourhoods, um, again, the position statement is, is quite clear in saying that our, the spatial strategy and the policies will reflect those needs and aspirations. Um, and 20 minute neighbourhoods are seen as the potential to reduce emissions and to improve health and wellbeing. And that we will be exploring now as we move forward that emphasis on living locally. And I think that's the real thing. That's what we're talking about. Um, not so much of a, 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 an over focus on, on an amount of minutes. And again, reiterated then in, the, in it around the fact that rural communities and our towns and cities and take account of the fact that they have um, a role in reducing inequality. So there is a focus there on these about looking at the areas that don't have that equal access to resources and amenities and doing something about that. Finally, from, from the position statement, um, uh, one that I was particularly pleased to see, those of you that know me will know that I'm, I'm working obviously with Public Health Scotland um, and, and really keen that, that we get an embedded uh, national planning framework that, that really does look at reducing the inequalities and increasing our, our health inequalities in particular. So it does state very clearly the vision will be supported by new and improved planning policies that bring together services and homes, giving life to the place principle and supporting public health and well-being and reducing inequality. That does lead on to, to something that, and a bit of work really that I started um, with many colleagues um, from um, public health, public directors of public health, heads of planning, COSLA, and probably coming up for two years ago now, where we said, but you know, when we look at these improved planning policies, most local development plans across Scotland have the sort of of, of what we deliver 20 minute neighbourhoods. So why isn't that happening then? So if we look at Melbourne as an example of, of what they are seeing are the features of a 20 minute neighbourhood, they're talking about, you know, local shopping and facilities and schools, parks, green spaces, gardens, safe streets, um, housing, a diversity, walkability, cycling networks um, and connections. All the sorts of things that if you look in, in um, a local development plan, there'll be policies there already um, progressing on those topics and requiring them. And the work that we were already doing, looking at the themes that sit behind the place standard, that's a very recognisable wheel as the tool, but there are place and wellbeing themes that sit behind it, as aspirations for outcomes that we want to achieve in Scotland. And we found that uh, as the 20 minute neighbourhood was, was reaching us from Melbourne and Portland and so on, that, um, that they actually mapped across really really well and we sat mapped them across and there was nothing missing there in those that have certainly been used um, across the world and those that sit in our own place and well-being outcomes that sit behind the place standard. For myself the benefits of 
those place and well-being outcomes is how they map across into the behaviour change that we want to see in Scotland in order to deal with the biggest inequality that we have, which is around health inequalities. And health inequalities are one of those foundations as well to, to then having economic inequalities as well, because if you're not at your best um, physically and mentally, then your ability to take part in, in society and work is, is um, impacted also. So just taking one theme of moving around um, and looking at one change that we can make in a place of improving walking and cycling infrastructure. The behaviour change that that results in is not just an increase in physical activity, it's more contact with nature, more social engagement and a reduction in travel costs. That impacts on all of the public health priorities that we are all briefed to deliver upon. Um, and then it maps straight across to the actual illnesses that those living in poorer and um, deprived areas in Scotland are suffering from more than those of us that are living in the areas that are not classed as SIMD areas. So there's a difference of 26 years for those that are living in those SIMD areas of suffering from obesity, heart disease, diabetes, stroke, cancers and mental illness. And if we intervene at every level with the, an ability to think about that, the three things going round and think about the physical place and how it impacts on people, we can begin to address those inequalities. We can begin to go into those areas and make changes in their environment that therefore have a read across and improve their, their physical um, well-being as well and their mental well-being and start to reduce inequalities. Music